everybody, it's Naomi Johnson from The Profile Company and today I'm going live to teach you um, a new thing that is, I've been sharing with my clients and it's been bringing great clarity to them about how to spend their time on their marketing and inside their business and I just really wanted to show it to you today. Um, and basically, it all works around the formula of a clock with 12 o'clock at the top, 6 o'clock at the bottom, 4 o'clock over here and 10 o'clock over here. And if you have questions whilst I'm doing this, then do um, just post them in. I'm a little bit far away, further away from the phone today, but I should be able to come nice and close and see them. So if you do want to ask questions, I'd love for this to be interactive. Um, okay, so what I want to show you is a way of knowing exactly where to put your time and effort and focus in your business to produce results. Now, I know from my own experience that a lot of stress and a lot of pressure comes going, well, am I doing the right thing? Is this the right place to be investing time in my business today? Is it going to get results? And when we're talking about results, we're really, really talking about financial results. If you're not making money in your business, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. And we all want to make our businesses make money. We have an actual need to do so inside of... Um, living but also if you're working a job at the same time as running your business as well then obviously you're going to want to get to that point where you're making money and you can make the shift from the full-time work to part-time business or full-time business and the real key for that is is that you actually make sales so with this being the clock 12 o'clock six o'clock I won't put the numbers on it's probably not needed um, six o'clock is where you ask the person would you like to buy from me and you make the sale. So they sign the dotted line and say, yes, I'd like to buy from you. Now, the stages that you have to take someone from being able to say, yes, they want to buy from you is actually quite a journey. So if you think of 12 o'clock being where the prospect, they just don't know that they have a problem. They aren't looking for your solution. So a really good example I like to use is one of recruitment. In recruitment, um, the normal turnover for a company of staff is around 60% turnover every year of new employees. But that's a cultural norm. It is actually, there are companies out there that have 15% turnover. Now for a company that has 60% turnover, they don't know that they have a problem because they have a cultural norm. They just think that's what it is and that's what the overheads of recruitment actually are. But when you come around to um, understand that there's a 15% opportunity, like an opportunity to get 15% turnover and all the reductions in cost that that would mean, suddenly that person wakes up and goes, well, what am I doing wrong then? What am I doing that's different that's not getting me the 15% that this other company are getting? So suddenly you've taken someone from not knowing that they have a problem through to knowing that they have a problem. And once they, have it, they know that they have a problem, they're going to start trying to diagnose why they have this problem. And they'll start looking at all the different options. It could be the leadership, it could be the cultural issues, it could be the HR strategy, it could be the goals that you set and the rewards that you give. It could be anything. Um, and they'll start to look inside here what it is. Now, if you are in leadership and leadership training, then obviously you're going to be saying, well, it could be leadership and I'm a leadership expert. Maybe I could help. And at this point, the person's come around to the idea that actually it might be my leadership. And they're going to come and they're going to start to learn about leadership. And they're going to start thinking, yeah, actually, I, I'm learning a lot from what I'm reading and the products that I've got here um, that I've bought. But actually, we, we need a real intervention. I need an expert. And when they need an expert, they are going to start looking then at you. Are you who, who is my expert and who can I buy from? Who do I trust to bring into my company and who do I believe will actually um, get results for my company? Hi, Rob. Hi, Steve. Um, so then that's where you come in as the expert and say, I can help you. These are my credentials. This is why I'm good at what I do. Would you like to buy from me? And if the answer is yes, I'd like to buy from you. Well, then let's jump on a call and have a conversation. Now, prior to this, you can show up right at the beginning of the conversation. You can create content that works on talking to people who don't know they have a problem, talking to people that know they have a problem, but are, um, and aren't looking for your solution, they're just wondering, do I have a problem? To actually, I am looking and I am investigating how can I solve this to myself? And then because you've shown up at all these different places, you're then their trusted advisor. They come around to understanding the absolute need to invest and invest in you and therefore they, they, buy, they, they come and talk to you about working with you. 
So when it comes to actually working with you, some of the biggest reasons why someone might not go forward or that they might see on your LinkedIn profile that you're actually an expert at what you do, but yet they don't go forward with you or even ask you to connect um, or look at your website is because there's something there, that, something missing in terms of understanding who you are, that you solve, that is the problem that you solve, that you understand their problem uniquely, that you've worked in their environment before and that you've got results before. And maybe another step further on that is that you're actually passionate about solving that particular problem and you've got case studies to exhibit like how you do it. So if you can have all of this information here and they understand the types of packages you might offer and how they might engage with you, it should naturally lead them to wanting to get you on the phone. Now you might think it's really natural for someone who's interested to buy just to pick up the phone and speak to you. But actually a lot more, again, goes into that. It's actually whether that person thinks spending an hour with you on the phone is a good use of their time, whether you actually welcome speaking to them on the phone, whether you're open to new clients, and whether they're the right size business for you. So again, you're going to take care of all of that on your profile and your website and other places where you, you put up collateral about your business. So then we come around to the four o'clock, and this is where you have them on the phone, and this is the conversation. This is the time where you ask them questions and, set, and find out about them and determine whether your solution is the right fit for them. If your solution is the right fit for them, then naturally they're going to say, how much? Yes, that works for me, and you're going to have a sale. And it's also good to recognize that sometimes you don't want to work with them. You're not going to be able to help them. So being able to structure this conversation in a really nice way where it's a discovery between the two of you can really take some of the pressure off, especially if you don't like sales. Um, so the key thing is to get people to actually get on the phone and have a conversation with you, to put a framework around it where you both know that there is an op this is kind of a sales conversation and if there's a good fit, you're going to say to them, would you like to work with me at the end? And it's getting permission to be able to ask that buying question, that it doesn't take them off guard, that they know that is the framework of this conversation. It's not, not just a nice chit chat. There's a possibility here that we might work together. And so there's a really nice script inside of here that you can use, which I'm happy to share with you um, around how you put that together. But the key thing in any business is that you have to get to the sale. And if you're not talking to your prospect, then you're not likely to get to the sale. Um, let's get the orange pen. There is uh, a statistic that's been created, and it says that 57% of a buying decision is now made online before your prospect will ever speak to you. And this really shows up on this graph. What you can see is 57% of a sale, this is very, very true in service-based businesses um, and yeah, coaching, consulting, where you time, sell your time for money. It's not this case in terms of uh, fast-moving products. You probably bought your latest iPad, um, your telephone, without speaking to a single sales representative. You literally went, oh, I didn't know I had a problem. I need, I need a new phone. What's the phone going to be? I like this person, I like this dealer, yes, I'll buy that, and then the, the deal was done. Nobody got involved in that. You might look at some reviews online, but 100% of the buying decision for that would have been online. You don't speak to a salesperson. Unfortunately, for those of us who like to hide behind the computer, if you're selling a, a service-based business product, coaching, consulting, anything where you get involved, there, that is just not going to be the case. It's going to be, a hundred, it's going to be about 57% of the buying decision that's actually made online before the person comes around to saying yes. So we have to be really aware that the other 43% is taking place here. And you have to look at their decision-making process and help them to answer all these questions to get to the point where they have this conversation with you. What happens after they've had the conversation with you and they've actually decided to work with you is obviously how you deliver. So it might be that you send them a welcome email, a welcome pack, you do a diagnostic session, you deliver stage one, stage two, whatever it is, and at the end you do a wrap-up session and say, have you got what we said we were going to do? Yes, we have. Would you like to sign off and say that this deal is now finished? Yes. And then in here you go to reviewing um, testimonials, making case studies, um, and putting it in your portfolio. So all of that happens in there, and then the process sort of starts again, but obviously with new people. But that, again, works as collateral and social proof that actually um, it's going to work for you. Who just put an angry face up on the video? I just saw that fly by. It really put me off. Oh, 
hope I'm not making you angry. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, so basically this is, the, this is where the sale is happening on this side. Everything else, that's kind of like on your side of the business and you might want to put some prices in place, take some of the confusion out. But here, this is where I see the biggest mistakes being made in a business. I know for myself when I wanted to hide behind the computer, when I was a creator and I wanted to um, just sit there and create and I love creating. And it's really easy to sit there and tell people what, like, this is how you know you have a problem, or this is how you fix it. Um, you might want to write a book or do videos or different things like that. <laughs> okay, it was Steve that did the angry face. Whew, I know you're not angry. Reveal your... Re reveal it? Okay. <laughs> um, actually, that, do you know that's sitting at five o'clock there? I'm going to take that off. Um, so, okay. So... This is where a lot of people like to spend their time and they don't like to spend their time here or they're disillusioned into thinking they're actually spending their time here. If you meet someone at a networking event, you say, yeah, we could work together, I could really help you with that. That is not going to lead to a buying decision. You're going to need to put scheduled time aside when the both of you sit down and really diagnose whether it's actually the right thing for you. So this, this section is really about sitting down and having a proper conversation. And depending on what you're selling, there could well be a proposal that has to go in place. So you might have to send a proposal. And you might have hundreds of clients coming through here, prospects rather, coming through and going, no, you're not for me, that's not right, that's not what my problem is. But once they get to here, where they say, yeah, I have a leadership problem, there should be no reason, and, and I like how you fix it, and I think you're credible, and I like to work with you, then it should naturally be that they get on the phone with you. So we need, to, we need to put that offer in and get them on the phone with you, have a structured conversation and come around to the sales. Now, I've talked about content that you would create here. But actually, this conversation can happen very, very quickly. You can meet someone in the supermarket line um, at, the, at, at the checkout this evening. And you can say, oh, what do you do? Oh, I do this. Oh, do you? And you have a conversation. And then suddenly, you... You say, well, actually, I, I can see you've got a problem there. I fixed that. Would you like me to help you fix it? Um, <clears throat> and then... Sorry, I have to look at that. <laughs> Sorry, everyone thinks that they did the angry face. <laughs> it's like, what's my assistant saying? She's on there looking at it. Um, Hi, Julia. Nice to see you. I'm glad you had a good trip away with the NLP, NLP work that you did. I'm looking forward to hearing what the changes and developments are there. Um, I was tracking you whilst you were away. Um, so we could ha I could have a conversation with you just in the supermarket and you c I say, I do LinkedIn profiles. Oh my gosh, I hear this every day. My LinkedIn profile's terrible. Does, do people really get business from it? Like, yeah, of course they get business from it. Well, maybe, maybe we could have a conversation and we can put some time aside and I'll review your profile for you and give you some feedback on it. Oh yeah, that'd be really good. Well, here's my card. I'll send you an email with a link to my diary and you can just go and book in there and we'll get on the phone. Boom, we get on the phone, correct? Um, I've got a storage issue, so I better hurry up. That can happen really, really fast. So the one thing inside your business you don't want to do is spend a lot of time up here in the early days. You need to be coming through this as fast as you possibly can to make sure you get to the sale. Because the sale is where the money is up at. That's where the business keeps on going. So keep focusing on getting that sale. And the way you get that sale is to keep making sure that you're having scheduled conversations that are structured with your prospects right here. And this can happen just in you making the offer. Would you like to have a conversation about that? I'd love to add some value with, on that with you. Then as the money comes in and you're delivering, you can go back and you can start putting some of these things in place. And then eventually you'll get to the point, which it's taken me a little while because I had to literally do this from the get-go. Um, I didn't have any time to waste creating content. I literally had to make sales when I joined my, when I started my business. I literally just got out there and did a presentation. I did a couple of talks and I got 40 people in here, put proposals together and I ended up with my 10 here within the first month of writing their LinkedIn profiles. And I just kept doing it. And then as I made time, I've come back and I've gone back to the branding. I've gone back to the images that we use and I put um, videos in. So now people know that they have a problem with their LinkedIn profile and they want some help. 
and you can go to my website and you can actually get some videos that tell you how to fix certain things. That's at www.theprofile.company, by the way, in the uh, resource library. So, but you can go back to that. Right now, you've got to prove the business concept and that you have something that people want to buy and know how they want to buy. You have to get to the sale. And the way you do that is by getting the appointment. So this is a new thing that I've put together to really help put clarity around the business and give you an understanding of exactly where to put time into your business. It's something that I do with all my clients, especially when they come in for LinkedIn profiles. And actually is the reason why I've set up now the LinkedIn Business Strategy course, which is starting this Thursday, the 6th of October here in Portsmouth and the 7th of October online, which is Friday morning at 10 o'clock. But it's all recorded going into the resource library so you can actually access it at any time. And what I'll actually be doing is helping you to understand this in your business. I'll be helping you to un construct what that call to action is that will grip people and have them want to join and speak to you. And then this conversation that you're going to have with people here. Because frankly, does LinkedIn get you leads? Well, yeah, if you put it there, you pitch the business, they understand it. People will start getting in touch with you if they see your profile. So you do still have to do something to get the profile out there and get it seen and, and become known. Um, but what you want is the profile to take people effortlessly into this conversation with you and also talking about you and telling other people about you as well. Um, and so your profile really, um, I wonder if I've got a different colour, not a big one. Your profile really sits here in terms of pitching you and who you are. And that's where we're going to spend a lot of time as well, is pitching your value. What is it you do? What is it that's different about you? And then in terms of driving traffic to your LinkedIn profile, it's really looking at the types of content you create and recognizing that your prospect could be in one or three places. They could be that they don't know that they have a problem. So in the recruitment example, they don't know that they have a, an issue with their staff turnover because they don't know that other companies can actually achieve 15%. Um, and so you could write articles about that. Then you could write articles about diagnosing whether what is the problem inside the company. And then you could write articles that help them to do it for themselves, but actually just sets you up as their advisor and helps them to go, gee, this is a bigger problem than I thought. I need some professional help. And you get them on the phone. So hopefully that's been really um, useful in terms of just showing you how, how to think about where to put the attention in your business and some of the key structures that need to get put in. And it has to be, get, the focus has to be on getting the sale. And the sale comes from here. So what, do, what can we be doing to get more and more people in front of you, having that appointment with you? And therefore, what do we need to put up here? And then inside of the uh, LinkedIn business strategy course I'm running, we'll also be talking about some of these things as well to help you systemize the business. But if this is of interest to you and you want to know more, it's just an eight week course where it's really broken down into each part. I'll put the link in a minute down on the bottom. Actually, Grace, if you're watching, if you could put the link to the, um, to the course page on, in, in the feed, that'd be really great. And you'll be able to see the eight modules that we'll be covering. We'll be covering this in depth. We'll be covering your sales scripts, um, how to manage leads when they come in, what to say to people, how to reply to them, all sorts of different things that will just get this working for you. It's 197 pounds plus VAT and you can access it from anywhere in the world. So if you do have questions on that, um, well, not specifically on that, if you have questions on that, you should come on the course. But if you're concerned or you've got a question as to whether the course is right for you, then do give me a call. My information's on the um, page. And also you can, if you want to get more, um, this isn't on there, but there is a webinar you can watch as well. Um, and then you can give me a call for a discussion if you're still not sure if the course is right for you. It's perfect for anyone who's in a startup business someone who's been established for a while and it's a service-based business, or someone who wants to become a thought leader and get known for what they do. Um, I've done this myself. This is how I came into my business 18 months ago. No investment behind me, no ability to get a loan, just had to make rent in 10 days. And I literally did this. And then I realized um, about four months in exactly what I was doing and have tested this with lots of people. And now I'm sharing it as the structure for all of the things I saw when writing people's LinkedIn profiles, they just didn't have these things in place. Even their products and what they're selling, they didn't have them in place. Um, and that's a game changer. So that's what the course covers. So um, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Richard and Julia and Steve. Um, I have to get closer. 
and Grace and Rob. Thank you very much for coming. Please do share this video if you found it useful. I'm going to probably put it on LinkedIn as well. So, um, the profile.company um, is the website and on there you can find the link to the course as well and we'll put the, the direct link into the box. So, um, really great to have you here. I hope this has been really useful and I'll speak to you soon.